G'day all, and welcome to my first tutorial on using NASM, the NetWide Assembler, and G++, the uh, GNU C++ compiler, and Linux. So this is going to be a remake of my very first Windows assembly tutorial, only uh, we're using Linux. And uh, my favorite Linux is Ubuntu, so that's what I'll be using. Uh, a lot of the command line stuff is different for different versions of Linux, and you know, I can't cover it all, so yeah, hopefully this will help you out, and if you're using a different distro, a different flavor of Linux, then uh, yeah, good luck. I hope you can figure it out. Anyway, uh, if you've not got a terminal over the side panel here, you might want to go into your little search bar and type terminal and uh, drag it over there. But uh, if I just click on that... Uh, okay, so the first thing that we want to do is install the C++ compiler and NASM, the NetWide Assembler. So if we go uh, sudo and apt get... Now this this is different for every distro of Linux, you know. Yeah, hopefully you know how to install things. Anyway, G++. Uh, so I've actually already installed that, so I'm not going to hit enter, but if, if you've not installed that, or if you're not sure if you've installed it, uh, yeah, install it now. That's the uh, C++ compiler, GNU C++ compiler. And the other thing that we're going to want, in a minute anyway, is uh, NASM, the NetWide Assembler. I think this is one of the finest assemblers ever made, so we'll get that as well. Okay, so once you've got those two things, um, we're going to actually do this in Nano, the uh, little, yeah, little nano. So when things get a bit more complicated, we might have to move on to a bit more powerful IDE. But for today, we'll just stick with nano because I like it. Really, it's really simple and uh, yeah, flexible. So actually, before I do that, whereabouts are we? I'll go to the desktop and go to NASM and I'll mkdir. I'll call it chut one. Make a new directory called chut one. And we'll go into there. Alrighty, so this is where we're going to make the program. So this little program is actually just going to uh, return a random integer, basically, from assembly, so that we can print out the value, just to make sure that we're actually calling some little function in assembly. Okay, nano main.cpp, just to open up a new file. And the first thing that I'm going to do in here is uh, hit escape and F to enable multiple file buffers. We're going to need that in a second when we add our assembly file. And the other one that I want to do is Alt-I, which is auto-indent. So, yeah, auto-indent just makes things a bit tidier. But anyway, let's just get moving. So, IO stream uh, using namespace std. This file, I think, is uh, exactly the same as the Windows version. Uh, Asom said... We'll say get value from ASM. Okay, we're doing 64 bit as well. I don't know if I mentioned, but we're doing 64 bit assembly. Yeah, we're not sticking with 32 bits. We're doing 64. Uh, I'm not sure if this first example is going to be 64 bit. I mean, that's up to the G compiler. But yeah, when we move to Nano, we'll be making 64 bits. Uh, so get value from ASM is going to be a standard C function, first of all. And we're just going to use the GNU inline assembler. So this is. Um, AT and T syntax and get value from ASM. And things are a little different in AT and T syntax. So, well, let's just go. So, first of all, it's inline assembly. Uh, MOV L means move long. Uh, yeah. I'll just go maybe 254 and percent EAX. Okay, so that's inline assembly, and you might notice that the operands have swapped. So the destination operand in AT&T syntax is the second operand, and the source operand is the first operand. This is not the same with NASM, the NetWide assembler. This is just the GNU uh, AT&T syntax. NetWide assembler uses Intel syntax. One of the reasons why I really like it. Uh, anyway, uh, immediate values are preceded by a dollar, and Register names are preceded by a percent in AT&T syntax. Anyway, if we save that with Control O and we hit Enter, then we hit Control Z. Uh, Control Z will put that into the background without actually closing it. And then we want to make an, a make file. So we go nano make file, and uh, I might make it run me. And it depends on main.cpp. And the command is g plus plus 
main.cpp o and run me. Hold on a second. All right, I'm back again. Had some visitors. Um, okay, so that's our make file. If I just control O to save that and control X to close, we don't want control Z to uh, keep it in the background. But now if I type make, hopefully it'll make it. Yeah, there it is, run me. So if we run that. Okay, 254. So assembly has returned a value to us, 254. Now that was using the um, inline assembler. And if we hit FG for foreground, uh, we don't actually want to use the inline assembler because, well, I'd rather use um, NASM, really. So, uh, actually, I might call it ASM, the same, the same. All right, but we want to indicate that there's going to be an external uh, function. It's going to take the uh, C syntax for operands and return values. It's going to return an int. It's called get value from ASM, and we're going to actually write this in uh, NASM, the NetWide Assembler assembly, and then we're going to assemble it and link it and you know compile and off we go. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, open up another file. I'll just call it asm.asm, and this is going to be our assembly file. So the first thing that we might do is define that there's a global uh, label. going to be called get value from ASM. That's just so that uh, C++ can actually see this uh, label when we make the function. And we don't need one, but we might as well define a data segment and a text segment. So the text segment is where the code happens. This is the um, yeah the code segment in uh, in Windows. So this is our actual uh, function just here. Notice that it's got a, 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 a colon on the end as if it's a label. And I might use RAX just to make sure that we're actually in 64-bit mode. And, you know, just some random value. And then RET. Okay, so that's actually the uh, NASM file. If I hit Control o to save that, and... What is it? Alt, comma. So Alt, comma switches back to your C++ file, and Alt, full stop. Yeah, you just use those two to switch between your files. Anyway, they look pretty good, so if we go back to C++, just make sure that's saved with uh, Control o and then we hit Control z to jump back to uh, the terminal with that running in the background. And if I just ls... Um, what we're going to have to do is change our make file, so nano make file. Yeah, we want to save that not only does run me the uh, executable rely on main.cpp, but it also relies on asm.o. And asm.o relies on asm.asm and nasm. So the the object file that we're making just here will be compiled with nasm, and then we'll link that with our G++. Uh, yeah, we'll link it. Okay, so the format dash f is uh, elf64, and the file name is asm.asm, and we want to output asm.o. Okay, so that's going to have uh, the NetWide Assembler assemble our assembly file into an ELF object file. And the other thing that we've got to do is tell G++ that we actually want to link with that file as well. So, something like that. Yeah. And G++ is going to uh, compile main.cpp. It's going to link it with asm.o, and hopefully all will go well. So, I'll hit Control o to save that. Control x to close, and make. Okay, that was pretty quick. Let's see what happened. Run me. Ah, there we go. Four, six, seven, six, three. So that is uh, just a little example of how to uh, link uh, a NASM NetWide Assembler external file with your GNU compiler C++ files, and hopefully that helps some folks out. Uh, later on, we'll get stuck into how you debug these things and have a look at the registers while it's running and that sort of thing. But uh, I hope that was helpful. And uh, thank you very much for listening. See ya.